Hey, welcome back. This is day two of the challenge to be Minecraft in under 17 minutes. And today I'm sitting here wrapped up in a blanket in my chair because I'm cold and it's really nice. But anyway, um, about this run, it was interesting and you'll see why, especially more near the end. But here I get a gold axe and I'm just able to mine these logs pretty good. Um, yeah, but anyway, today's topic, because we didn't really have a topic last time, we just more talked about the run because I literally just started this series, but now we have a better idea, and I'm going to talk about some random thing, but it's not that random, it still has to do something with the playlist here. So, I don't know if I mentioned in the last one, but the inspiration for the sub-17 actually came from a few things, it's not just a random number that I picked. So, first of all, I asked some friends what would be like an impressive time that they would like to see, and a bunch of them said 17, which was super surprising to me, because 17 feels like I mean, not completely random, but, you know, it's not some cool number, like maybe a sub-10 or something, but I'm happy. 17 feels doable eventually. Oh yeah, I struggle to make a portal here a bit. I haven't really practiced these um, ruin portal sort of builds, so I'm just going along with what looks right. And here I have to put this lava here, but then I don't have water. And I don't block it off, I just kind of place it, and also it fails the first time. But anyway, you guys will see what I mean later in the run about the cool thing that happens but the other important thing about these runs is that the run you can't always expect it to get completed and there's the failure that i'm talking about literally place the obsidian on the wrong block what am i doing attempt two goes well i'm able to enter the nether in just over two minutes which honestly isn't a terrible time for this particular seed it's a pretty bad time but you know, we're in. I spot the bastion there, a little, just like, a little clip of it through the wall there, and so that's good. We're gonna dig over there. Now, I will mention one other kind of like cool thing about this series, which is that I'm not always going to complete the run. What I mean by that is, if my daily run doesn't go good, well, I still want to be able to post something mainly, but also, if I feel like the run is like important enough that I should probably post it or it was close to a PB or something went good but I died, or I just couldn't complete it for some other reason, well, I would still want to post it, because A, it just adds more suspense anyway, and B, well, literally, that means I'd have to redo, like, so many runs if I wanted to get a perfect, good new run every day, and obviously I don't have to get a new PB every day, that's crazy, but if I wanted to get a completed run every day, that means a lot more running. But yeah, in general, I think runs can still be good even if they're not completed, so uh, don't be weirded out when you see that a run isn't completed, uh, but they'll always be, like, pretty good. This must be a stables again. It seems like I'm getting stables a lot these days. Anyone else find like that? I don't know. Just stables? Super common or something. One other thing I did want to mention is that I still didn't have ninja brain showing in this run. I have no clue if you guys actually want to see ninja brain or not, but I didn't have it going this time, so hopefully you'll forgive me. I'll probably add it next time just because why not? Like, it's a pretty small part of the screen. Um, but yeah, you'll see. You'll see. And here we dig into the good part, which I recognize right away from that weird formation there. And I'm like, oh, this is literally that place. So I just do the setup, place two blocks, and then a block to the side. Dig down, and now we have gold just behind this wall. So the run is going pretty darn good at this point. We have the pigs getting mad in the background, and we're about to be getting a bunch of loot. Let that guy down, throw some gold. Block it off again, of course, and then let these guys down, because there's even more up there. I only get four, though, because I didn't actually, like, run around and attack them before, like you usually do. But one did fall there, so maybe I'll get that guy, but I don't remember. Also, the same gold thing that happened last video happened here, so I'm definitely thinking it's more common. Maybe it's just I'm placing blocks too fast, and it, like, defaults to going upward. Because I guess that would make sense, there is no sort of limit upwards. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't go infinitely upwards, but it does go infinitely sideways, so it would make more sense if it went up as a default. But anyway, here we go. I'm grabbing this gold here because I didn't see any other pigs, but I still quickly dig down just in case there's going to be some attacking me. Uh, throw them gold, and we're getting some pretty good trades, actually. I guess that is in part to lucky seed again. But... I'm really happy with my progress, and this run ended up being pretty good. Put our chest down, sort the inventory, but not too much because we want to keep things speedy. By speedy, I mean, yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know what I mean by speedy, but at least as fast as I can go. So put the flint and steel in there, at least I use one. Everything leaves except the stuff I need, so I should probably really get rid of that bag of thing, which I'm not going to be using. Good job there. And honestly, I'm, I'm pretty lost for words now. All I really wanted to talk about was pretty much the run and also how things are going for the run series, like, you know, Lucky Seed, or no, I already said Lucky Seed, I mean, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the motivation behind Sub-17 and stuff like that, that's all I really had on the train today. Let me think if I have another story or something. Uh, what's interesting enough these days? Um, oh yeah, the thumbnail. I had a ton of fun making the thumbnail for this series. It's pretty much going to be the same thumbnail, but just with, you know, day three, day four, and so on, so on. Um, it, it, was, it was inspired by the current speedrun world record, like, the, the thumbnail. It's Drip. I forget the numbers in their name, but, you know, Drip, very well-known speedrunner, got the world record. And the thumbnail is them in the stronghold with some text behind them. And I kind of wanted to go for that same vibe, but I put the text to the side just to make it simple to read and not be literally copying 100%. But, I don't know, it was always a cool visual to be in the stronghold about to enter the end. It's like the most exciting, sort of heart-pumping time. It's like, this is the end game, you know? I feel like that's at least what I feel. Maybe other speedrunners don't feel like that because they're confident. And especially people who have to zero cycle, I mean, come on, that amount of stress when you're about to enter the end, like, if I fail this zero cycle, well then the run's over, well, at least if you have a good time. But luckily for me, all I have to do is craft my beds and do a one cycle, because I have no clue how to zero cycle. I guess that is something else I could do in the future, if you guys wanted to see, like, me figure out how to do other advanced speedrun tactics, like running different routes in the Bastion instead of just all the basic ones, uh, zero cycle, what else have we got? I mean, I guess there's other cycles too, there's that, um, oh, what's it called, ground zero or something like that. All these new techniques being uncovered. Um, yeah, also, don't know why I built all this stuff here, I'm just getting around in a very awkward way, but, and then I do a clutch there, I'm, I'm such an interest, I'm such a confused man. Oh, and another clutch. Convincing. Very convincing. And finally, we head over to the fortress. It is 8.07 on the timer. So that's cool. And I actually didn't know this was the spawner right here. I tried to dig up, and I just dug to the side. But it's not too bad, because we're able to recover quite fast. Just by placing some blocks and getting up to the top here. You'll see. Just a simple little stair like that. Probably overused the blocks there, but whatever. You know, the stone axe for extra damage. Even though I think they both two shot, I just feel more confident at least. And here we have 26 obsidian. Wow, that is quite a, a lot. But I guess we were there for a while, so it makes sense. And again, we really gotta improve our portals too. Oh, we have portals! I've, I've seen uh, a bunch of people use a two magma block portal in the magma ravine. I only know how to do a 3-1 with like an L shape, so you sort of dig in, place the door on the furthest away L, and then you place the two doors at the back, and then other bucket stuff. Generally I have a muscle memory now, but it took a while to learn that, and I can't imagine how hard it is doing it with just two, I mean, you have to like pick up the lava as the water's coming down or something like that, I don't know, but maybe I should learn that too, it seems quite important. It's fairly used by speed owners. What else do I talk about, man? I don't know. There's like nothing to even say at this point. Uh, digging these walls here just to open up space. Kind of a new move. Could have just made a bed and exploded it. But I don't know. It's been a while since I got to the blaze spawn. It feels like if I did it this late, like what's the point? You know what I mean? But I do only have two blaze rods. Which, uh, for me, seems a bit unlucky. Alright, there we go. I think we got one more there. And continuing with this spawn increase here. Oh yeah, and of course, if you have any speedrunning tips, like, directly for me, let me know in the comments what you think I should do. 
Uh, I'm very beginnery, even though it may seem like I'm pretty advanced, but trust me, I'm super new to this speed earning thing, and I would love all the tips that I can get, especially like applying fire potions before I get burned. I think this batch actually gives us the right amount, although it could be six if I remember correctly. Let's see. Look at my inventory. Oh, no, I'm just gonna keep digging. Well, alright, but I think I have about either five or six at this point, so one more will do. Especially on Lucky Seed, the. I think the eye break is like. It could be regular, actually, because I think I disabled some sort of eye break cat thing. Um. But it still feels like you. I don't know. Just to me, I guess. There we got one. So I think now I'm on six, actually. We're at five before. And then was that the seven? No, no. Seventh here? Maybe not. Do I go for more? Oh, I'm at five. That's, that's crazy. I seem to remember being at least at six for sure. Oh, now I'm at seven. Okay. There we go. It was pretty fast. Another thing I did want to mention about this run is I didn't craft a shield, uh, which is super uncommon for me. Here we're in a cave, pretty unfortunate. Don't know what I'm doing spending all this time here. I probably should just start digging. I guess my iron pick was pretty low, so I wanted to find a spot with some dirt. Yeah, I think that's what I did if I remember. But then gravel falls, I think, like, in a second here, and it's super weird, because I thought no more would fall and it would just be an ocean, but then it's just not an ocean, and it's, it's so weird, you'll see. Oh yeah, and then I encounter some coal, go to the side here. It probably would have just been faster by the time it took me to decide to dig around the coal to just dig the coal, but I don't know. I, you know, it gotta be different. Just dig around the coal, maybe save a couple milliseconds, but gotta have faster decision making than I did. Or else it is not worth it. Alright, so here are the gravel falls. And I'm like, ooh, yes, ocean. But I look up, and it's just some random gravel patch. But I still go up anyway, because I thought maybe it'd be an ocean. And look at that, more gravel falls. And this time, it actually is the surface. Not even an ocean, though. So there's just one block separating me and two piles of gravel. Also, a fun little thing you can do here with the lava, because it's snow, if you place the lava, it goes above the animal, like you saw there with the sheep. And that way, they don't actually burn the stuff in the lava, because it drops below. So, you're pretty much just free to collect whatever you want. In my case, I need food and, I guess, more wool, but we have plenty of wool, so... Don't know if I should go for sheep there. Alright, seems like we're going to be making our first eye throw soon. What am I doing? I'm drinking the last fires, I guess. Don't know why. <laughs> Failed that lava right there. That time good. You saw that. It just pops out the bottom. It's like, it's kind of beautiful, honestly. But I guess it is not good to think that because you're literally murdering an animal. But anyway, here was a ghost bucket. Super annoying. But we got it. And first eye throw should be somewhere soon. Bro, how many sheep am I going to kill? Oh, I think I decided to do it here. Yeah, I build like a block. I don't know why I always build like these high places. Anyway, there's the eye. Zoom in. Do all the stuff. Ninja Brain is in the top left, but you just can't see it. Sorry. That thing broke too fast, so I had to throw another. Correction. And there we have it. Copy to clipboard. So at this point, I think it was 75%. But I always go for two eye throws because my thing is like too accurate for the setting I have it. I used to use this super zoom thing, but it just got a bit too weird using it because of some weird OBS overlay settings. So I ended up switching it again just back to uh, no zoom, but I didn't switch the settings of Ninja Brain properly. So like I'm pretty much just relying on the fact that I'll somehow guess right which is a little concerning, but luckily with two eye throws, it usually gets it, at least in the stronghold when I go in the portal, so I'm happy enough with the settings I have. And that's another thing too, if you did want to know my settings, I could put them in the description. Just leave a comment telling me, and I will do so. 
Also, if you didn't know I'm getting logs here, it's because I need beds. And wow, that was a close call with a creeper. And another creeper. Your creepers, they're just so good at sneaking around. It's crazy. I don't even hear them. I guess that's the point. Alright, here I have definitely enough logs. So I go over here, do the second I throw... Okay, I decided here for some reason. Again, super weird. Break that grass, might have been in the way, you never know. And here we have it. Oh, I did something super unfortunate there, and I saw it. I switched, I don't even know how. Wait, if I go back in the video, what does it look like? Hold on one sec, guys. Gotta figure this out, because I switched my Q, actually, my throw button, for something. And I'm just gonna watch this back really slowly. Wait, what? So I think... Just above the done button, there's like a little, maybe a section where I can click the Q for like drop item. That's crazy. Like, you can't even see the button. Wow. Crazy. Anyway, it doesn't matter for now. Everything's fine. I still go back and try to reset it, but it's just like good. I'm just so confused. Rightfully so. But anyway, here we go. We get 100% after the second eye again because it was too fast. Now it's just a race against the clock. I have to go back to the nether or not. Maybe I won't decide to do that. Who knows? And hopefully I will be able to nether travel. See, I have a 16 obsidian, which normally that would not be so ideal. But luckily I spot a ruined portal right there, which is absolutely great. You know, the people who do only the, the one eye thing, only using one eye, they don't have to deal with that. Oh yeah. Here I'm struggling throwing the axe because it's actually, that's the reset thing and I was so confused. Um, but yeah, I reset it. Uh, I mine this chest, get this stuff. Luckily there's obsidian, so I don't actually even need to use the room portal. And from here I literally just run. I don't know why I'm still trying to shoot, dude. I literally have so much food. It's crazy. But yeah, anyway, moving on. I'm running away. These guys are actually doing quite a bit of damage, which is very concerning. But I run, and it looks fine, because even though there's lots of zombies, I make the portal. Why did I make the portal right here, man? You know, I could have just pearled. I didn't have to fight these, what, four zombies? It's like a huge time waste. But I, I'll, I'll know better for next time. Little rookie mistakes. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Is this run? I remember this run, and it was so annoying. Because when my axe broke, that baby zombie started chasing me, and then I had to craft, like, stuff while I was running away to make a new axe. Although, I probably could have just used my golden axe, because I literally had another golden axe. Yet, I decided to do this weird maneuver, man. I tell you, all my decision making, it's just off. Either way, get these zombies, and we are good. And we finally make our portal. Now, Ninja Brain said it wasn't too far away. I think, to my knowledge, it was 147 blocks away. Uh, could be a bit more because of portal linking, but should be alright. So I see the direction I have to go. I pearl. Actually, I decided to go down, I think, yeah. Because it's better to go down when you're making portals in order to actually have a proper area. Yeah, I'm just in lava, wasting time, so I try to build a little bit, make it faster for me to swim on. Works a little bit. Probably could have built a little more. Here we go, walking up this area. I don't see any good terrain, and the cords actually go a lot more uh, where I'm looking right now, like, sort of this, this way. So, I decided to go around this way instead. And luckily it actually does pay off, because I find a little, like, ravine area. And it lets me dig a lot better. You will see. There we go, pearling down to the ravine. And from here, it's just a little dig. And we will be, well, not there, but close. Yeah, it was a little bit of a long journey. Notice how the timer is only at 20, though. And this is actually pretty good pace for a possible record, once again. Because keep in mind, this isn't just to go back to the overworld. This is like full on to get to the stronghold and if we have good nav in the stronghold this could be it you know this could be another record but i don't want to spoil things for you guys so here we go probably fast forward this digging in post because it's pretty boring to watch someone just dig 
Oh, never mind. We literally exit the hole right there. Didn't even need to speed it up. I guess maybe I would have sped it up like a tiny, tiny bit, but that's about it. From here, it's just a little dig. I decided to go uh, in this hole here. It's a little bit of gravel, so I have to use my shovel, which actually ends up being faster than pickaxe, so kind of happy I encountered that gravel. But then we have a lava pool, which is good. Like, it seems bad, but it's, it's good. Trust me, because if I just pearl, then I'll be way closer to the cords. And look at this pearl throw. Actually, you guys don't even know the cords. But if we see, it was 48, I think. Yo, that pearl throw was pretty good, you gotta admit. I mean, it was close, so it's not that impressive. But still, I think it was pretty cool. Final side, and then we'll light the portal and eat while we enter. Oh, never mind, we do not eat while we enter. But look at that! We do indeed enter the stronghold. I see a little secret path here, and secret paths are usually indicative of some sort of good thing. So I go down the secret path, there's a staircase, and another door, and another door, and more stairs to another door. Honestly, why do I even bother saying another door? Strongholds are full of doors. But there's nothing, so I end up going back up because I know it's not going to be more than seven rooms away. That's like the sort of rule the speedrunners follow, it's just never more than uh, seven rooms away. And luckily here, I do think I find it soon. Here we go! Is the portal room the only room with fences in the entire stronghold? I think it might be. So yeah, I saw those things and I was hopeful and it was. So yeah, we don't even bother, we do the speedrunner thing, no spawn, <coughs> no starting inventory, we just go straight for it. I guess you guys don't even really, well at least for the new viewers, you don't know what I used to do. So it seems silly that I'm even saying we're entering the speedrunner way because it's just what I've always done. Although this dig up is new for me. For some of you, oh wait, no, because you didn't even see that because I last time I just sort of pearled, I didn't even have to dig. Before I just dug stairs, Yeah, this time I actually did the pillar up thing, which is a bit faster. Here we go, creating the obsidian part. Only two needed, which is good. We had two exactly. Technically only one needed, but I like to use two. We go over here. It looks like it might perch, but whatever. If we miss one perch, it's not the end of the world. Well, from my level of speedrunning, that is. See, I already have a crafting table. Make the stuff, meaning basically a chest just to store our inventory, uh, and make the beds. And then after that, it's making time, but I literally put the wood away, so I'm gonna have to get that. Yeah, that was unfortunate, but here we go. Beds, we have 18. We're not gonna lose this one cycle. Like, we cannot lose this one cycle. We have 18 beds. So I get all that. We can hear him perching over there, so kind of unfortunate, but whatever. We got it. Blocks in the last slot just in case, so we have to build up for the dragon's breath and stuff. I actually do build up a little bit right here already. A little bit more inventory sorting, but that seems good. I try to be careful not to look at any endermen as I sort of wave my crosshair around. And now it's just a waiting game. We will see when the dragon perches, but first it is going to come over here and be annoying and shoot me. Lucky we are, the dragon's flying over there, and let's see. Let's go, it did a click. And we enter the portal room. And we're gonna get the one cycle, but then, oh no, an enderman, it came for us. And we do the second bit, it, it, we might work. But no, we died in the run, guys. He was a 25, that's like on par with our PB. I don't know what to say, that was fun and also sad that we lost it in the end. I said at the beginning of the video to you guys that it would be sometimes a loss, but hey, I think this run was good. We made it to the end on time, almost got a new PB. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you tomorrow in day three's run.